Uh, we are now at the last phase of our event. So we have two more very interesting keynote speeches today. I will announce the first one, which is uh, Jan Krikels. If you can come on stage, so we can welcome Jan with an applause. Okay, so Jan is uh, is basically able to do everything. He's a writer, he's a designer, he's a design director, he's a human, he's a founder of a Yaga company, Jan will, will tell you about. Um, he recently wrote an interesting book, which is Innovate or Die. Uh, I think the slogan is not meant, meant to be scary, it's more to be challenging, right? So scary. Yeah. Okay, so Jan will tell you about the book, about, uh, will deliver some messages about innovation, what is innovation from your perspective. So I hear it. Okay, and I, I leave you here. Thank you very much. It's yours. <laughs> um, first of all, to talk a little bit about myself, otherwise you think all the things I say are nonsense. <laughs> so as a child, um, I already wanted to live out of the box. I really did not want to take part in society. And uh, it started, uh, my father was in, 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 uh, somebody who was installing central heating, so he brought comfort to the people already, which is a good thing. And um, I wanted to see how he did it. So I was a child of five years old, and I saw his truck running uh, out, and he went to Brussels. And I was not allowed to go with him. So what did I do? I hide myself in the truck at night, so I broke out of the house, I hide myself in the truck at night, and in the morning he took me with to his job without knowing it, and there I <coughs> popped out of the car, and I helped him hold all day making these red pipes, uh, let's say, uh, these pipes red color. It has always been in me to go into this parallel universe, the things which you cannot reach to know this. Eh? So, uh, as a son of a central heating installer, I always had to work at home because it was a culture coming from agricultural people that you always have to work. So it, I tried to escape that work by studying uh, something like anthropology, which my father never could understand. And, uh, and he didn't like it at all. So when I uh, did his studies, I left for the world. And so I took my backpack and I went to China. I see China, uh, like Shanghai, without any light. In Beijing, there was no light. In this period, you had transmigration passes. So I went to universities to get people who speak English to see the world. So I see it very archaic without any 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 other uh, influence of technology. I also went to Indonesia many months, Papua New Guinea, and afterwards I, I went to, to Mexico and South America to find out where all these ideas of these uh, Mayas and Incas came from. <laughs> And uh, I wanted to sail around the world, I still wanted to do it, so I studied also everything about the climate and everything, because when you sail you have to know something where the wind comes and the stream comes. So I did this um, in the beginning with a bag, with a backpack, on trucks, with people. So my, my idea was to live the experience of their lives. That's all what we want to know with profile. So I already did it 30 years ago, manually, by going to all these countries, all these people and try to feel how they live, how, what, how, how their existence was. And I also knew that there were many species dying and coming in the world, and some uh, are adapted and some are not adapted. So I tried to find how does it come that a culture is not is like a species. Right? When a culture can adapt itself, it's a good species. So there must be something in a culture which is a standard thing genetically that it can adapt. And that's what I tried to find out in every culture. What are really the values or the archetypes in these cultures which makes the culture sustainable? Because in life, we just are a little leaf on a big tree and we have to make that this little step is sustainable because maybe there's a tree growing on the side. So, <coughs> so we must be very fun to that. Yeah, so uh, I'm going to start with something. So I see the world completely different, to completely different eyes. Um, uh, Really on backpack. And later on, I went with. Uh, I came into in Kazakhstan in a uh, in a yurt. And it was minus twenty, and I had to live there without energy for two weeks. And then I <coughs> decided for myself, it's a good spiritual goal 
to bring warmth to the people. Because when you don't have warmth, you cannot function at all, you don't become old, you cannot socialize. Uh, life is really a terrible. So bringing warmth to the people was something which uh, really inspired me. And later on we're going to see what this warmth is and what the damage is. First, I want to bring you a little, little startup. There must be sound. Others call me Mother Nature. I've been here for over four and a half billion years, 22,500 times longer than you. I don't really need people, but people need me. Yes, your future depends on me. When I thrive, you thrive. When I falter, you falter. Or worse. But I've been here for eons. I have fed species greater than you, and I have starved species greater than you. My oceans, my soil, my flowing streams, my forests, they all can take you or leave you. How you choose to live each day, whether you regard or disregard me doesn't really matter to me. One way or the other. Your actions will determine your fate, not mine. I am nature. I will go on. I am prepared to evolve. Are you? made an impression on you. Uh, I want to tell something about archetypes. You know, in every culture, when you examine, there are some different types of people. But if you don't have them all in these cultures, you never come to survive in the nature. In the nature, when you want to survive without technology, alone you have no chance at all. We have never been honest with the animals. We always use technology. And uh, if we really have to be with the animals uh, without any technology, we don't have any chance. We're just food. So the, the, out of this frustration, we did, we invented technologies. And uh, the technology comes from a, uh, let's say, a creation of different archetypes. It's not coming from an engineer, uh, because alone he has no power in nature. It's coming from a combination of different archetypes. And this is what I want to talk, tell you a little bit about today, about the five archetypes. I, the first one is the engineer. So the engineer used to think about time as a circle because he lived in the nature. And later on, he was started to think as time on the line. Where we have to go back is find engineers that know that all their applications, what they have on the, on, on the world, that it has an influence on the biological circle. Everything we bring into the circle has an effect on us. That's very important to know. We talk about a little bit about the balance of people with nature. Because, I told you on the first slide, we don't, we don't have to save nature. We have to save ourselves. <coughs> That's very important to know. There's a big difference. Another, another archetype you see is uh, the, uh, the artist. Is he who can create beauty. Because beauty has an influence on your on your feelings. When you create beauty, it, it's another archetype than the guy who's engineering all the time. When you go to the moon, the engineer says how much you have in any second, but uh, used to have a problem is saved by artists. The third uh, archetype you see here is the guy who lives on a cloud, you see. He's the dreamer. Right? And uh, the dreamer is actually somebody who always is with his brain in the future. You need them in your society, when you don't have them in your companies, it's going easier, of course, because he's always very difficult, because he has a lot of fantasy. But actually, the dreamer is 
using a lot of fantasy in all those methods of thinking about the reality. <coughs> but he's the guy who, where all the technologies are coming from, because he has some kind of uh, mental technology of abstract, making things abstract, to think something, and we copy this and make it talk. So it's the, it's the visionary capacity you need in your dream. The other one is the, uh, the emotion guy. Okay? He can bring people together behind one idea. And the spiritual guy says, we're only here to create better life for the people behind us. If you got these five people together, you can make the bridge to the future. If we fail to have one of them, we don't have any chance. So I suggest that all the political systems, companies that you add in the boards, we have to look to the boards today, how they work. You have to add into the boards this green engineer, this ecological guy who knows something about technology. You have to add this artist, because the things we make are they really good. Um, you have to add somebody who has visionary capacities. You have to add somebody who can bring people together behind one idea. Today you're making technology for this, I know. And you also have a guy who says, it's not important, you are not important in all this service. You're just adding a little step to the future. So when we go to the first archetype, you see there the, the tree and the bird. We humans always think that nature is something apart from us. But the pollution we're creating today then, will make us aware or counts is that we are nature. Very important to know. Uh, I, I want to say something about the speciality is that we create a lot of entropy. Humans create a lot of entropy. Entropy is like you stand up on a on church and you take, uh, let's say, uh, feathers from a bird, you throw it into the air, you say, wow, see what I can do. But the next generation has to get the feathers back in order to do the same thing. And some feathers don't fly so far, okay? these are good recyclable, but some feathers like uh, carbon, see carbon dioxide, is something which takes 10,000 years to get the feathers back by nature. So it's important you know that the level of entropy of every step you do in process. Today, we don't have any balance with nature. Who knows something about nature? Mm -hmm. So what do we do? We, people talk about reducing our footprint. Who knows who, who, what the footprint is that we have? You should here in Belgium go at least 10 times lighter. Can you imagine this? Everything you eat, do, consume, transport, voyage, you have to do 10 times lighter in order to be into an international average. So if we have to share tomorrow with the rest of the world in an open community, there's going to be a lot less of us. So we have to think differently in the future. This is, for example, the result of, uh, of uh, processes on the planet. Uh, this is the carbon dioxide in parts per million. Who's, who's comfortable with this? Very good. You see that there is carbon dioxide. This is the result of fires. Fires. If, if, you, if you understand how the planet works, the sun shines on the planet, which brings energy. And imagine that the reflection of the sun is 100% back to the universe. It's very cold here. It's minus 10. And because there is an atmosphere with gases, which have a certain thickness, that there is a delay of some rays going back to the atmosphere. To the, to the, universe. These gases are brucas gas, I don't know in English exactly today. It's called carbon dioxide and the methane. I think today the, the carbon dioxide, you see, carbon dioxide, for example, is 300 and it took 50,000 years to get it to normal level. You see that the temperature is also average of the planet can drop when the carbon dioxide drops. And you see that the sea level is also dropping. So it's very interesting that the correlation between carbon dioxide, uh, the temperature of the planet, and the sea levels. How can the planet clean this carbon in the air? You know this. Good. It can 
do it by photosynthesis. Photosynthesis is a superb innovation of nature that it can clean the atmosphere and the temperature can drop. Before it was very hot here, very hot and rain and storms are really rough, not to survive for humans. And by the greening of the planet, it cooled down the world, the temperature went colder, you see, and also the water levels dropped, how much? 60 meters. So immediately you know when all the ice is melting, every single planet, we have 60 meters more of water. Good to know. Then you see also an uprise here, which might be some kind of uh, uh, contact with some uh, external, external, external thing, or some fires, or some eruptions from the planet. And you see you add again the fuel. Huh? And you see also that the uh, temperature of the world is dramatically uh, going higher, and the sea levels rise. And it goes like this in a cycle of 50,000 years. If we go here, you see something which is very high, very high peak. Where does this come from? Us. We started with a little campfire, and Prometheus stole the fire from the gods, brought it to humanity, and this was bringing prosperity. No, the fire, just yes, energy, was in the, in the beginning a top thing, because when you had it in your environment, you could scare away all the animals. You could clean the air from bacteria, because the air dried a little in the humidity in the Boston. You could burn down fields, you could start uh, agriculture. From this agriculture, you could, uh, what did we else do? We cooked the food, it made us heads like this, because in four hours, you can eat as much as proteins as otherwise in 24 hours. It gave us free time to think. Right? So the fire really did a lot in our lives. Later on, we made motors of it to move around quicker, to go with some kind of tiny time machine quicker in the future. Uh, we made refrigerators, we made computers. Everything is built on the energy transfer of fossil energy, making it burn. And the rest of it is carbon dioxide. So you see perfectly what we are doing. So what will you expect that the temperature will do if you compare this length with this length? So there's a correlation. We can really calculate. You see that the Earth did not react yet because there's still ice. It's reflecting the sun. The oceans are still cold. It will take some time. But the moment the ice is cold, this is melted. And the oceans have a certain temperature, we're going to find ourselves in a dramatic shock of temperature. I don't know if somebody knows something about the biotopes. Um, it means we, li we can live in a certain fragile yeah. temperature scale. Right? When it's too cold, we need heating. When it's too hot, we need cooling. But you see that the, the temperature zone where we can live in in the world in the future will dramatically change. It means that wind directions will change. Glaciers will melt, there will be no water in the summer for millions of people. Sea will rise. So we, we today we live on, let's say, a silent crocodile. Well, in the future, this crocodile is going to wake and, uh, and they say that when national, the, the, the national uh, sorry, Discovery Channel says, when we have more than six degrees, it is impossible for humans on Earth to live. I can show you these movies. Then we have to talk all the time about the future. Is it impressive? Okay, don't go. Therefore, we already went to the desert in 2006 to make a piece of art, really to find out if fire was in motion. Here you see, but in the beginning, there's enough trees around you, see? And then you start a campfire because you have no reflection. You lose a lot of heat, maybe efficiency 3%. The rest is fuel. And because the, the trees every day are farther away from the camp, we start to start, to start a fire in protected areas where you don't need so much energy. And the more and more the energy is farther away from the house, even in the soil today, at five, six thousand kilo, five, six thousand, five, six kilometers, we make more and more energy efficient systems. Of course, this is Yaga. We are the highest energy efficient system. <clears throat> 
uh, we burned down this piece of art, uh, which is about 100,000 kilograms of uh, wood, and it's a temple of the creative economy. It means you see here that it's symbolizing all our brains connected. So the next industrial revolution is one of connecting the brains. That's what you're busy with. But we also burned it because um, we wanted to simulate what people do with the world. It's a simulation, uh, burning all the energy today, which is giving us prosperity, which makes us from zero in the nature. Has an effect about the carbon dioxide and also what the result can be on the planet. This is about energy. About energy, I can talk for hours. I only have 45 minutes. Um, this is about the raw materials. As you know, we have four elements. Huh? Sun, we have also earth, we have air and water. So this is the raw materials. Uh, today, we think that we live in, in, different, in a world full of raw materials and they will be there forever. You know, if you make a car, which is 2,000 kilo, there's 20,000 kilo of junk you don't see. And lots of products we generate, they create a lot of junk. And nobody's repairing it in the nature. For example, if you take the price of the oil today, nobody says in the price of the oil is not the price of the pollution. Today we have a price of raw materials and water and let's say energy, but we don't calculate the pollution in the price to repair it. It's for the next generation. It's not very human uh, because we have to make a better world for the children, worse. So here you see, for example, the very critical raw materials, you can have them here, platinum, everything in, in, in very high technological products, that there's only, if everything goes well and the economy goes fine, there's only 20 years. So then we have a wall. So we have to think recycle. Who's thinking recyclable? Uh, at Yaga, we already started this 25 years ago that every product that we make must be possible to take apart by human hands and be recycled. And all the products, all the materials that we use must be not like feathers, which takes 10,000 years to recover, but they must be recovered easily. So they must be inert for all external situations. And you already know this logo. It means from bird to bird, like the nature. Our products must be like nature. When you make them and they die, must be food for another generation. Uh, also, in, in the creating of the forms we do today, it's better that we look to Earth itself. Because all the forms that we meet in the nature, which we don't like, because when you look into the nature of these producing forms, nothing of these forms we take on. We don't like nature. Because it's killing us. So we must go in the future to look more biomimicry in our designs to create the forms of the future. Because evolutionary, this has had maybe, I don't know many, how many forms, but this is the best surviving form in this environment. How we do this with materials, a uh, little promotion of the brand here. You see that all the energy, all the products Yang is producing must be possible to do to produce with clean energy. Clean energy means no fire. So your homes, your cars, your agricultural machines, your transport system are going to take the fire away. Right? The fire is the oil you burn, the gas you burn. Can you imagine when we do this tomorrow what happens in our society? I don't know how many dead we have. We don't even have food here for a couple of days. The trucks, they, don't, they stand still on the highway. So it's a complete shock for the future. So we are not prepared for this shock because there comes a time that it costs a barrel of energy to get one. Even if the world is full of energy, it will cost energy to get it. That's the way of no return. So we have to prepare ourselves for the future without fire. You see the carbon dioxide, we cannot add anything more. Uh, 99 of the people uh, specialized in uh, the climate say that it's human. So you see, for example, how do we try to manage our business is by only developing products by life cycle index. What is life cycle index? Life cycle index is a, it's a kind of number you create, for example, in Belgium with OVAM, 
is you take something out of the nature, you transport it, put it in factories, put it into the life, and then you recycle it. It's a certain number you can you can calculate of all your products uh, on the life cycle. <clears throat> For example, you see here this radiator is using five kilograms of material to give five watts. Right? So you have to use five kilograms of material to have an output of five watts. It has, for example, an LCA score of 284,000. For example, evolutionary became another radiator. I give you just an example. This is the best example I can do with our radiators. You see, it has more efficiency, material efficiency. It has nine watts per kilogram of material. Now we're going to use technology and uh, other uh, conductors. You see that we are busy with heat emitters which use, let's say, which can give 250 times, 250 watts per kilogram. <coughs> so they are ultra light. So the future of all the materials is ultra light high capacity. For example, to give you an idea, in your house you can also have a floor heating. This floor heating, for example, gives one watt per kilogram material. And you know this one watt per kilogram material to get it in your house, you have to make it. You have to burn energy, you have to transport it, you have to put it in your house, and after 50 years it's waste, you have to recycle the waste. So the life cycle index is a lot higher. So there is a good method of looking if the product is okay for the future. Look at the life cycle index. These are just examples. So you see, even with an ecological consciousness, you see that products can look nice. Now what's the future? The future is a carbon-free building system. It means that it's not a, it's a building where you use a little bit of carbon to generate it, but the amount of carbon that you grow to build the house, you can subtract from the building. That's zero carbon building. I just put some topics you can find in the internet. So this is my first archetype. It's somebody who has a high consciousness about the circle of life. He thinks about time as a circle. There must be a balance. Today, if we look to the food system in the world, we have a big problem in the future. Today, we make five kilowatts per person on the planet. Uh, it tripled in 50 years. So we took from the nature. To keep all the species alive and to keep the biotope, which is a mechanism to keep life on its position, we um, we only we, we bring together only three kilowatt to the people, so we waste two kilowatt already by distribution and by economy. Because when we don't get money for it, we don't deliver it. If we go to ten million people and we have to give fifty percent back to the nature of all the lands we do today, that's what the specialists say. We have to double the output of the food. Today, the energy we put into the food to get it on your table is a lot higher than what it delivers to you. So it's a negative energy system we have today for food. So we have to bring the food back close to the homes where it came from. Now we're going to look to the second archetype. If you look to the products we make every day and we consume every day, how much percent of these products we still know? How they work, where they came from, and, and how much you know what process they had. When they started, did they destroy the world there? The people who made them are they socially equal to us? Then we have the transport systems, then we have the, all these systems that we put in the, in the big shops. Then we take our little app, we push on it, and a big truck comes in front of your door and it delivers something. How much of this? That information you know. Today, nothing. We just look at the price. But we have to look at the future too. Where's the product coming from? And do you still know how it is made and how, what's in it? <coughs> how much percent you think 50 years ago everybody knew everything about the home, the products, the cars, everything? Today, what you know, what's in your car? I cannot even open it. I can load one up. So we are in a Draining cultures of creativity. 
We have to know the things that we consume. And for big piece, we have to make it ourselves again. This brings happiness because the artist, why is he happy? Because he knows how he makes things. He knows how to make things. We don't know how to make things anymore. We give it to other countries, we let them grow. They are happy. But creating things for your own, this brings happiness. It is, it is there when we are very young. Um, we, we are very creative, we have a free brain, and somewhere in the evolution, somebody takes it. To school teachers. Uh, this is for me a very creative brain. If you live in a desert, it's 50 degrees, you have nothing else, there's no shop, there's nothing. To make this for yourself, this brings happiness. This is, this is just a symbol of we have to sing back about ourselves. This he used two plastic cola bottles, at least they're, they're used for something, but they are insulated, you see, because this soil is 50 degrees. So creativity brings happiness. So why are we unhappy? Because we buy. It's only happiness for a couple of seconds. So we must create because creating beauty and you create who let, who let these children make us something? Nobody. It's in us, in our genes, that we have to make the things we use for ourselves. So the creative economy is really the future. So that's also what we did with Yaga, a little commercial here. We tried as uh, guys from Deep and Big within the middle of nowhere. We tried to also create beauty. Therefore, we tried, we went to some uh, kind of juries international and we won already a lot of products, prizes, which made us very happy that we learned to create beauty because a lot of products I see today are awfully ugly. They don't have any emotion, just functionality. They don't feed my heart. So we have to learn to create beauty. For example, for me, this is the most beautiful radiator in the world because I created it myself. But if you would create something, or you would like it to be the most beautiful radiator in the world. So and this has nothing to do with price. For us, it's just an honor for ourselves to come to the idea to create this. So this, we still have to leave in the culture. So if you take the GPS today, it takes away a lot of from my from my brain. Also from my heart. I don't know where I am anymore. I'm lost in the Before I did the sales in Yaga, I had no telephone. I just went to the red lights and chased all the installers. It was really experience, fun to find the roads where they were. I know Brussels by the heart. Today I don't find anything. So all the technology we create, it takes something away. What you win is what you lose. So we have really to decide if we bring something into the world. What garbage is it bringing back? All the disruptive evolutions, leaving a lot of people um, with their artistic jobs aside. Uh, we, we are stealing it from them. This is, this is ethical. We have to find, uh, find solutions for these problems. Here you see, we created like this, I'm not going to exaggerate, but we can tell, more than a million different forms. That's why we are so happy. We created all these forms. Then the accountants come to us and they say, Do you sell them? Yes, we do. We are there. We make people happy with this thing because we let them also co-create. If they have an idea, we say, I make it for you. I'll try it. So we bring a lot of happiness, and that's not really something you measure on the balance, on the balance sheets. Of course, the dreamer, we have some kind of special talent the animals didn't have. That's why I went to the uh, South America and North America to see all these uh, in Casmaya, Stoltek, Olmec, I've seen them all. How the hell did they get so small? They could, they could make, uh, if you take to the Inca, they put all these buildings at uh, four or five kilometers above, uh, let's say, sea level. They are built of blocks which have 11, 11 squares. Nobody knows how they get these blocks on these hills. But they built many different cities in 500 years. They even could make it group. Food above the green level. Nobody knows who they are. So they lived on the cloud already. So they had some kind of intelligence, some fantasy. And I think the fantasy is the motor of the evolution. 
So that's why I went to look to uh, South America to find out if gods were cosmonauts. Yeah. People from my age know maybe this uh, books. Uh, and I have a, a, an Argentinian uh, writer, friend, girlfriend. She's written about the sperm of the universe. Yeah. She says some kind of comet passed here on the earth and the tail broke on the water because the tail broke and it created life on Earth because we don't know the formula of life. We know parts of it, but we don't know what re where really the life comes from. She said it comes from this tail of this comet. But she says, <clears throat> one million light years from here, this sperm from this comet also fertilized another planet. And these people are a million light years from the Earth. And they are connected with us. This is our fantasy. Because with our fantasy, we can think things which don't exist. We can go faster than light. We can imagine a lot of things. So we have some kind of telekinetic time machine which can create forms in our brain. And we have to use it. Who has a visionary in his board today? We don't believe these people. But they see the future. So we have to put it in your board. If you really want to innovate, you have already the, the green guy, the green engineer in your board. You have the artist who says it's not beautiful. Like you have to create beauty, but beauty is radiating something to you inside. And when it's beauty, it's like music, it makes you a better man. And the visionary guy says the things you make, I don't know where they're going to land, because where does our future survive model for man on earth? I listen to all the political speeches, but what is the future? Because that's one for all of us. It's for seven million people. We just uh, say we have to use less energy, but our energy today makes us important in the future. So we have to go to green, te green technology. Who's doing this? We are already busy trying to force the arms of all the engineers for green technology, and they say it's too expensive. Why? Because in the price of the energy, is the pollution not going to work? So we are naive with energy bill we have today. The materials, 20, 25 years, they're gone. Who cares? But the people are going to live in the future too. And uh, our, our children, children are going to live there. So we are creating more life. Always say, seven billion people, we go to two billion. But there's not enough food or water and assistance for all these people. And of course, the pollution in the air is dramatically methane and the CO2s are dramatically The pollution in the earth by the agricultural systems and the industrial is dramatic. If you look, if you hear Dos Winkle, which is a specialist in the sea, he, he's been swimming in the sea for 35 years. He says in 2050, no food. Who's busy with this? We're all looking. All stuff we do every day. So we have to go out of the box if you need some spiritual. Uh, so we have no future for that. Nothing. What's the added value of our community in the world? We take something, we don't add something. So we really have to think. So in order to travel and to socialize and live tomorrow, we put this artistic apple. You're going to live it in the future. It's the Yaga creation. It's an apple which you can print 3D. And you can make your own energy, you can clean your own air, and you can simulate your movements. It's like when you sit in a train in the morning, and the train is moving, the train beside you is moving in front. You think you go backwards. Who knows if you go backwards in front of what you know? It depends on your preference. But in this, you can simulate with organic uh, printable uh, bullets, you can hook up with internet. You can fly to the moon easily, like my brain does. So my, what my brain does by simulating this flight, by droning it, or by simulating another future, I can be in another existence. I can work, I can socialize. So this digital economy makes me not move. And if people don't move, they don't spoil the earth. They don't burn energy, they don't make cars, they don't make highways. They, and then the possibility is there of letting the nature come back for 50 percent. This is a future survival. So 
beside this bubble, you need to make your own food. That's also possible. It's easy to make. And you clean your own air and you recycle it. And everybody on the planet may be possible to print this out of organics. That's something to work on. What we do in the Zero Energy Building is, of course, already 25 years too late. By all the discussions and uh, lobbying, we just make things too slow. Of course, we do a lot of good things going to zero energy buildings. But everything built before the 80s, we cannot use. That's the next immobilier bubble. Everything which is old and sold to you as a value has no value. Because in the future, you're, gonna, you're not going to get energy. You have to create your energy yourself and make it mobile in your house and recycle it. Too slow. What you see here, this is where the world goes to, where the ratio goes to. The ratio, the reason says we are in time because we discussed about it and everybody has taken part in it. But emotionally, we know it's too late already. If you see the things coming to us, your heart knows that we are too late. So I prefer thinking with the heart than thinking. For example, you see that. Everything goes to the, the condensing boilers in the homes, in the cars, and everything has to go to, let's say, electric or heat pumps. And you see in the future, everything goes to hydrogen, to water plant. This is just uh, zero energy building for new homes. We already make these products. Um, we, we try to get less material. We, for example, create a supernova which is something which you can warm your house immediately. We look to the house in the future as something like your car. You step inside, you have to comfort. It does not you have to be your car. You can also go to a different house or an Airbnb house. You come inside and the comfort you need, you communicate with all the radiators there and bring you the comfort as you want. When you leave the house, it's recycling that energy and putting it back in the system. So these things we are building, Today, only for large, large, big buildings. But it has to go today to the, to the home business. So it's saving a lot of materials. You see, we already saved 226 to 46 materials. Is it, ex is it expensive to the guy? No, we save raw materials. It's good for the planet. We need to have this consciousness in order to be. Internet of things, we're going to make things of internet of animals or internet of all the biological life. We just had discussions about it. Everything is going to be so smart that it will have environmental debt to our existence and otherwise. I don't have to talk much about this. I think Confucius is a lot more position to know that um, everything is going to be connected, going to be known, going to be transparent, going to be connected. But the real thing we have to do is make something which gives a survival model for all of us. This is the really big one. So that's all already what we tried with Amazon. Amazon is a, a company distributing products to people, uh, let's say, in America. It's bigger than Walmart today. Um, and these people are socializing already in organic bubbles. So when they come and they know together, they'll go in a biotope. Because when you go on a biotool, something comes to you which you cannot measure. It's it, it's it's balance in the life forms. And when you add yourself in this balance of life forms, you feel yourself very well. I do it with my aquarium, my saltwater aquarium. I try to do with engineers, specialists, uh, try to make it work that my, my aquarium did not need fresh water again. So they could recycle it take all the time the same water and I had these things that take things away. We could not do it in three, four years, it did not work. And then there came another guy to me and says, I'm going to make your salt water aquarium work, he says. Every month, it takes 50 liters of seawater connected to all the single earth. In 10 minutes, the seawater aquarium comes in. The same with people. We are not connected anymore with, with biotopes. Just have a tree in your garden, it's not a biotope. A biotope means it's an organization of untouched things or simulated uh, by nature, simulated simulation of nature, where you go inside and it keeps you, it 
add something to it. Some consciousness, some good feeling. So we have to create this biotop in the future. And if Trump wants to build walls and stop the EPA, um, we better make a rule about America so they can be in their own system. And then they rapidly detect that uh, they are connected to. So as we just makes a roof about like a big bubble and wall so they can pollute whatever they want. So we, uh, we, we created lots of forms, visionary forms. These are radiators. If you have to do the old systems, they are five times wider, five times higher, slow uh, in the way and not looking designed. This already made of organic materials because using organic materials is ecologically better than other materials that you would take out. I just want to give you a couple of examples mm -hmm. that uh, sounding, difficult, sounding difficult in your strategies can also make nice. Then uh, about innovation, um, socially. So we talked about an, an ecological innovation, a balance. We talked about an artistic innovation we have to do. Also a visionary, uh, 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 let's say, innovation. And also our biggest innovation will be that we put these archetypes in the board. I come back one year from here and I ask you, how many archetypes did you put in the board? You will say no. So, so you don't want to innovate. Real innovation comes from a balanced board with all the archetypes. You're going to have a fight. But a real fight, and on the end, everything is more balanced. And that's a top, better road to the future. We build a lab which is participative. And this, these little sticks symbolize the connection of all the brains and the hearts of the people globally. Every year we have more than uh, 4,000 people from all over the world because I'm not running around with a backpack anymore and I walk around with brand and culture and that. And they all come and we socialize, uh, we smell each other, we see each other, um, we talk about things, uh, we get excited, uh, we get inspired. This is the motor of Yaga actually. We have for everything we do, we can do in laboratories, we can simulate there all these houses, we can simulate two houses in the cold and the hot, we can uh, have super insulated houses, and we put in oxygen machines, radiators which create oxygen. It's important when you live in a closed house, you need there. We made oxygen radiators, and all these ideas come out of a collaborative brain globally. As wide as possible. So people from Chile, Indians come, people from uh, China, everywhere. From all over the world, they come from Russia, and uh, they come there because it's a good feeling to connect with all the nice people. Because air, the cleanliness of the air is going to be the most important thing we're going to face in the future. So our homes must be connected with the system that all the air which comes inside is controlled. And when we have an app about detecting what's inside, and even if they're genetically things which are not correct, we have to kill them because they're going to kill you all the time. So the homes of the future are going to be like living on the moon. So we try open innovation, which is damn difficult. Open innovation is, is a game. If you don't play the game, the carnival of the real is open innovation. Um, we discuss it afterward. It's connecting all these cultures in a, in a competition and having a big jackpot. And the people who looked to it pay the jackpot. The same we made here, we made like a soccer game. We gave all the values to the people. What you think about the future, we're going to create something for it. We gave the, the Yaga people inside the company, which are workers, any same people in the offices, they could put themselves into groups, works on ideas. And in an open innovative model, you have a jury. And you have points and you have an audience. Because which soccer player will play without an audience? We don't play without an audience. So we have to put an audience around six you can give it. In one week, we created 130 new ideas. So it's not a very, let's say, complex spin offs that, uh, let's say, things are created. We must integrate in all our models, open international culture at any level for you. Because innovation, which has not been carried by the normal people, will never get there. So we have to get the normal people to this innovation process. And we have to make new business models uh, by valuing them, rewarding them. 
I think uh, in the future there will be all these systems. What we also do when we say something, we first want to test it. The things I say, I first tested this model of the archetypes and the board by this truck, the Yaga truck, which is an open innovative truck. And uh, we have been in more than 30 or 40 countries, I don't remember it. We did presentations, workshops, tried to find out the, value, the real values in the people's heart. Of course, I had all my experience with my world tour as a, as a let's say, a, somebody going to all these cultures. And we came to this innovator or die model. And uh, everywhere we took politicians, uh, artists, uh, philosophers, spiritual guys, anything to the model. It was an open cultural trip to create a, a road to the future. Because the only thing we have to do in the future is getting away from all the materials. And then, you know, all the business models today, they just count the materials. Just make stuff, transform it, pollute it, and live, live to the people and we make junk. This is a very old system. We have to think circular, create beauty. Uh, it must fit in the future what we make. Everybody must be involved. And for this, uh, the bridge to the future, what we have to make is also responsibility. To know how to make it, we took a hundred people of the companies, of the Yaga company, and we went in the middle of nowhere in the desert. And we wanted to build the totem of this new world. The abstract, visionary model, how is the future looking? To communicate about it. Because if you have fear, if there's fear, because everything that's bringing fear to the people, is breaking the free spirit. We must not live. We had to. We, we took this uh, hundred people to the uh, desert. We took hundred and fifty thousand meter of wood, scrap wood, and we created in one month at fifty degrees, bringing all the water and food. We told them what to do. Created economy or a circular society. And uh, that's not a wood. It's a bridge we have to make. I show you here. Yeah, there it is. Here is it, the totem you see. It's the, the we wanted to create. This is this is 150,000 meter of wood in the middle of the desert, 1,000 kilometers from nothing, from nowhere at 150 on the meter high. The night is zero, so we did the effort to create this symbol yeah, with the Yaga company. And it's called Uchronia. Is the place where there is no time. If there's no time, everything is perfect and stable. And there's a lot of people joining it uh, to celebrate everything here. And we learned there that, for example, um, being in the desert, creating this, that water is one of the most important things. If something happens with water, we were all dead. We took the risk because if something happened with the water, we were all dead. Nobody could say it. The air was okay, this, the food we made ourselves, and the, making the food ourselves made us so happy. And also the, the working together on this piece of art, which was dramatically dangerous sometimes, uh, because there's winds of 80 kilometers an hour, there's people working in this way. And we wanted to make the symbol of the brains connect, so we have to make technology to connect the brains. This is what I think, because with more brains, we are more intelligent to do all the things we need to survive. For example, you see all the sticks, and for example, uh, Mr. Fiducci stick here. It's only one stick. But by making bridges to all the other things and people and cultures in the brain, by not having an open and free spirit, we can create this uh, simple picture. What else did we do to, to, uh, to prove that uh, without oil you could? Uh, survive we created this little car of let's say some kind of nose of a little uh, lightweight plane and we have drove from copenhagen where there was the uh, uh, the congress around the climate completely to south america, south africa it's thirteen thousand kilometers without just to prove the world that there are other systems to move the world Then we said, why are we always innovating? We have all these discussions and people have all these arguments. I said, why don't we listen to the children? Children are naive. We 
didn't know each other. So what did we do? In order to think about the future, we asked 10,000 children to paint the future. What do they want? What do the children really want? Because we create a society not for ourselves, it's for the people behind us. That's, that's only part of a bridge, part of a tree. And um, we put them all in a box. And um, we made a piece of art, uh, some kind of uh, product which, which, which we think the future is. All the technologies on board here were what we think and the future is needed. There was a bio bubble to uh, clean everything and to generate food. There was a food printer. There was also a woman to make humanity sustainable. Because otherwise humanity is not sustainable. We don't have a woman. Eh? We have to breed. Otherwise, if we say we live forever, we don't need them. Eh? When, we, when you say you're going to die, you need to make children. Because, yeah. And we put the, 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 the 20,000 wishes of the children in, in the spaceship. The wings are for capturing the, the energy from the sun and the communication and everything. And the form is some kind of form which you can do for the uh, And uh, we bring the fire and we burn. Because when you're burning things, you bring it quicker to the life. You don't have to deteriorate from nature. But it works and everything you bring to the And I must say, none of these wishes we do. We don't do We are so busy with ourselves, we think we are God, that we don't even listen to the children which are smart. This is, for example, the energy you see from burning uranium. And this is the energy symbolizing the energy of one truck in the air. All these trucks you see is all energy burning. And not, and that's what I want to prevent you from. Technology is hiding the problem. You really have to go to the origin of the problems and uh, look to the life cycle in, in, in the, the cycle of things to understand them. So it's not about calculators, it's about integrating all kinds of archetypes in your world. This is going to be the most difficult part in your innovation that you put these archetypes in your world because you think it's going to be a mess. But if you look what we do, we make already a mess. It cannot be worse, but at least they're going to put a spaceship we are in in the right direction. So it's something for the generation behind us that we should be there with. It's about honor to do this for you. And we have to do it well. So we just do not have to be calculators. And this is we have to do more out of the box. This is interesting here. We do a lot of to give you some realizations. They put in the realizations. I'm going to go quickly to them. I don't know how much time. These are realizations. This is a little bit my life to end. You see what the CEO of a company has to do.